Hi guys, Aaron back again and welcome to another week of reacting to chart music. Um, I don't want to waste a lot of time talking this week, I just want to crack straight on with it. Uh, we've got three new tracks this week, some artists I've heard of, some I haven't heard of. We'll jump straight in with the first track. Uh, this one is called Trolls, it is by 6699 and Nicki Minaj. Uh, we reviewed a 6699 track a few weeks ago, um, Goober I think it was called. I seem to remember not being a massive fan of it. Um, I honestly didn't know Nicki Minaj even was still active. Um, so yeah, don't really know what to expect. Again, go into it with an open mind, take a listen, see what we think. So we've kind of got that vocal that I've kind of spoke about quite a few times during this series in that, you know, you can't really understand what you're saying. Um, it's kind of got that rhythm to it, but, you know, with this one, it's it's slightly less pronounced because you can't necessarily hear the words being pronounced properly, so you can't hear the different syllables. Um, you know, it's similar to the track that I reviewed the, of his the other week. Um, it's nothing too special so far. Again, you know, it doesn't really go anywhere. It's kind of quite similar. Um, it changes up a little bit about a minute in, you know, with where the vocal becomes more pronounced. Um, you know, the lyrics are okay. Um, it's kind of what I expected from him. You know, obviously I know a little bit of his backstory, you know kind of what the guy's about. Um, it's kind of what I expected. Nicki Minaj hasn't done anything on it so far. Um, you know, it's, it's just middle of the road. I mean, one good thing I can say about the track already is that, you know, Texturally, it's quite different through, you know, as, as you travel through it. Um, I'm about a minute ten in and, you know, it's changed sort of two or three times already, which I'd seem to think unless we're getting the track from a few weeks ago confused with something else, you know, that one didn't really do. Um, you know, so that's always a positive. At least it's, you know, something a little bit longer to keep you interested. So I can't decide whether I like, you know, the shouted rap bit. I can't decide whether I like that or whether I really dislike that. It's it's different to a lot of things that are in the charts. Um, I w I'd say I actively dislike, you know, the quiet mumbled stuff, but that, you know, it's different, which again, it's it's not always a bad thing, um, but I just can't decide with that one. It's kind of, it's, I'm like the epitome of indifferent about that. See, that's one thing I really don't like about Nicki Minaj, which I seem to remember that she did in a lot of the songs before. It's like the almost the childish over pronunciation in some of the words, you know, like she did there with the better, it's like better, and she'll hold the note for a long time. I really don't like it, but let's pet peeve of mine with hers. Um, I think when she sings, she's got a good voice, or she used to anyway, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's not great. I guess in a sense, Nicki Minaj kind of deserves a lot of credit for, um, you know, kind of starting this whole movement in a sense. You know, you know, certainly as a female artist, she was kind of the first one that did it. And I probably couldn't name another female artist, you know, that had gone to the lengths that she's gone in this genre, you know. Um, you know, the rap, the real laid back, almost trappy beats. You know, a lot of the stuff you hear in the charts today, it's kind of what she was doing a few years ago, just a little bit different. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I'm not surprised to hear her on a track like this. I would think that, you know, she's got a good voice. She should sing a little bit more. Obviously, you know, it's very manipulated when she does it. Um, you know, the auto-tune's always there, the effects are always there, but it works, you know, Starships of hers, the chorus was huge because it was sung, um, you know, various different things, so that would be one suggestion that I would perhaps make. So yeah, like, instrumentally it doesn't really go anywhere, um, you know, textually, yeah, there's a lot of things dropping in and out, it kind of changes, you know, on the fly a little bit. Um, you know, and I like the contrast between his vocal, you know, his shouted vocal and then Nicky, um, you know, the three different things, it does keep you interested. It's, it, you know, it's it's a longer song than some of the ones in the charts at the moment, but I think it's got enough going on to warrant being a bit longer. Um, you know, it's not the most inventive track. It's it's pretty middle of the road. You know, it doesn't really go anywhere apart from those little textural changes. Um, you know, it's it's never going to be for me, but I don't actively dislike it. Um, obviously, we do the tier list every week. I'm going to put that one in indifferent. That shouldn't come as a massive surprise to anybody that has been watching this series. Um, but yeah, so I certainly don't dislike it as much as I remember disliking the other track of his. So um, yeah, that's got to be a good thing. And with that, we'll move on to the next song. So the second song for this week is a song called Savage Love. It's by Josh685 and Jason Derulo. Uh, Josh685, never heard of. Honestly, couldn't tell you what to expect for him at all. Jason Derulo, it is many, many years since I've heard of Jason Derulo. Similar to Nicki Minaj in the fact that I didn't even realise he was still active. Um... I seem to remember kind of liking, you know, some of the stuff he did, you know, Trumpets was pretty good, um, Marry You or Marry Me was pretty good as well. You know, obviously you've got the signature Jason Derulo at the start of every song, I'll be interested to see whether that's still a part of his music. Um, so yeah, we'll take a listen. Told you. I seem to think I've heard this, I've definitely heard the, um, 
you know, I can't, I can't think what it is now. Whether it's just that I've heard it on TikToks that people have been playing around me. I'm not on TikTok, but whether I've heard it of people listening to, um, I don't know, but I definitely recognise it. It's kind of like Jason Derulo by the numbers so far. Um, it's kind of got a bit of a reggae feel to it. You know, it's on the offbeat. It's quite, I wouldn't say it's different necessarily, but, you know, it's certainly, you know, there's the risk of sounding like I'm contradicting myself. It's different enough to be different, even though it isn't different. That probably makes no sense at all. Um, but I know what I mean. Hopefully you do too. But yeah, it's 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 just Jason Derulo by the numbers so far. Yeah, I really like that actually. The chorus where it drops out and it's just his voice with the acoustic guitar, and then it goes into the melody, him singing the melody line that I said I recognised earlier on. Um, it's really cool actually. I really like it. Um, Jason Derulo has always done you know melody lines really well. I really like his use of harmony as well. You know the discreet underneath. Obviously his voice is auto tuned, but I think that's kind of that's kind of his thing if that makes sense um you know he never claims to be the best singer but it works for what he does and the melodies are really inventive so it's really cool i mean it's kind of got like a lethargic pace to it but in the sense that lethargic is usually a derogatory term it kind of works with this one you know it's it's it just ambles along but it, it does it really nicely um you know when the synth i think i think it's a synth anyway it's quite a strange instrument does takes over with the melody line and jason derulo kind of ad libs around it it sounds really cool um, yeah, I really like this one, actually. It's another one that I think will be really big when the clubs reopen. Um, you know, it's got that that instrumentation line with the melodies, really cool. Um, lyrically, it's not complicated, but it's got enough hooks in there to keep people interested. Um, it's a really good song. I really, really like it. Um, it's not one that typically I would go out of my way to like either, you know. Um, but it's quite refreshing, you know, in, in terms of what's in the charts at the moment. It is different. Um, yeah, and, and the beat on the offbeat, you know, there's not enough of that around. It's kind of a very summery feel to it, but it's not outwardly like, you know, a few years ago when we had the Tropical House movement where, you know, everything was outwardly summery. This is kind of just like a laid-back summer feel. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. I really like it. If I was going to have one gripe with it, then it would just be that it kind of doesn't go anywhere. Um, it isn't long enough to become repetitive in that sense, but... You know, textually, I feel like it, even though it does drop out in the chorus and then come back in with the instrumentation, the melody line, I do feel like maybe a little bit more textured right at the end would probably help it. But with that said, um, I really, really like that one, actually. Um, maybe somewhat controversially, I'm going to put that one straight in the playlist. Um, I've actually saved it in the playlist as I was sat here listening to it. Um, I really enjoyed that. It's definitely one I'm going to go back and listen to again. Um, I think it's one that will climb as well. I can't remember exactly where it is in the charts now, but it was sort of mid-20s, maybe low-30s. Um, I definitely think that'll climb. Like I say, it's it's one that I'm sure I've heard before, but I, def I really, really like that straight in the playlist, definitely. Um, so we'll move on to the third song this week. Okay, so the third and last song this week is a song called 322 by D Block Europe. Um, not heard of the song, not heard of the artist. Um, the one thing that struck me so far is the cover art, which I'm sure you can see there, if it focuses, yeah. Um, it looks like, you know, it's a, it's a guy behind bars, whether it's maybe a... Um, you know, a rap song maybe by that. I, I, I really don't know. Um, we'll take a listen and we'll find out. See, that, that's quite strange. Um, from the intro with the guitar, you kind of expect a little bit of a beat to it. And then when the rap comes in, it kind of, I think it counteracts probably the right word. It kind of counteracts what the guitar was doing in the first place. Um, perhaps you'd be better served to just get rid of the guitar and just have it come straight in with the rap perhaps um, it kind of juxtaposes a little bit too heavily for me okay so we're like a minute in and the couple of points I'm going to make are like again lyrically we've had this issue with a few songs on this chart video me, um, series I've been doing lyrically I don't understand how it's in the charts I don't understand how Radio 1 would play it you know there's a lot of expletives in it there's a lot of you know, not that that offends me by any stretch of the imagination Christ if you know me you know what my vocabulary is like but if you're going to be on Radio 1, I would feel like, you know, you've kind of got a tailor's audience to that. Um, this maybe isn't what I would expect. And, um, yeah, it's it, I just find it quite odd. And the lyrics are very, very repetitive. We're like a minute 30 and he's not said anything other than the one line. Um, there's not been anything changed, really. To me, it's like you could just cut that in half. Yeah, so it, it, it's really repetitive. Um, it does, just doesn't go anywhere. It's And it, like I say, it's mainly the one line the one phrase even you know all the way through um I'm not a fan of this one really um it's a long song in the context as well you know four and a half minutes to have the same thing over and over again um, it's uh, it doesn't do anything for me i'm afraid 
so yeah, there's there's not a lot else to say about that one really. Um, it's going to come as absolutely no surprise to anybody that that one is 100% not for me. Um, I find it really repetitive. It's way too long, four and a half minutes when it really could be, you know, cut in half almost. Um, it doesn't go anywhere. Instrumentation, it's just a bit boring. Um, you can't really even comment on his voice because he doesn't really do anything other than, you know, a real short verse and then the same phrase over and over again. So there's really not else to say about that one. Um, so that is it. That is the three songs for this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree with any of my opinions. Um, hopefully you do. Let me know. Um, and yeah, check back next week for another episode of Reacting to Chart Music. Thank you for watching.